I'd like to uh, introduce our first speaker for this session, uh, Dale Henderson, Managing Director and CEO of Pilbara Minerals. Dale is an engineer with experience in both mine operations and development in the resources sector. This experience has included brownfields and greenfield settings across a number of commodities in both metals and onshore hydrocarbons. Dale has worked for a range of major resource operators, including Fortescue Metals Group, Chevron, Occidental Petroleum. Prior to joining Pilbara Minerals, Dale held leadership roles with Fortescue Metals Groups in mine operations and project development. Dale commenced with Pilbara Minerals in 2017 as the Chief Operating Officer to lead the delivery of the operations and development objectives for the company. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dale. Thanks very much, uh, Reg. You, you won't hear a story like Pilbara Minerals in the next three days. A company on its knees in 2019, fighting for survival, now the leading growth stock in the ASX50 this past year with over 114% growth. It's a story of grit, survival, teamwork, and a big dose of good luck. This type of story is only possible in Western Australia, a state with a long and proud history in mining, a foundation built by many miners, contracting companies, and government groups on which Pilbara Minerals' success has been made possible. Many miners have walked this very stage. As such, there is no better place to reflect on this journey or outlook than here, diggers and dealers in Kalgoorlie, an historic home of mining. Now, Pilbara Minerals, we've been going from strength to strength, but we think that's set to continue. And it's set to, to continue because of three differentiating factors. The first is our people, the great people of Pilbara Minerals who have been responsible for everything we've been delivered to date and that will be delivered in the future. The second relates to our performance. We've honed some fantastic expertise in operations for lithium and development of lithium. And our quarter on quarter performance uh, speaks to that record. And all going well, that's set to continue. Lastly, it's about potential. We've got an incredible runway ahead of us of further value adding, which is exciting to see. So people, performance and potential we're incredibly well placed to make the most of this amazing market that's unfolding before us. Now where we're at today, we are the largest independent hard rock operation uh, globally. Uh, we finished the financial year uh, with 620,000 tonnes produced. Our market cap is 15 billion and we've got more than 3 billion on the balance sheet. And for this year, we're estimated to be 8% of the global lithium supply which is a remarkable feat given uh, the young age of the company and what lies ahead. But it didn't start here. Pilbara is one of those just incredible stories, a one in a million story, uh, founded by five GOs who, who went to uni. In 2017, the, the major project funding was secured, 100 million US dollars secured from the Nordic bond market on the other side of the world. It was secured on the other side of the world because it couldn't get financed here. Although it was a critical minerals project, back in those days, critical minerals were not that critical. By 2018, the project was built and we were just in time for the downturn, or the lithium winter, as we called it, during 2019, 2020. And it was an incredibly tough period, which almost broke us and broke the company. During that period, it was all about survival, cost down, balance sheet defence, as we called it. Two rounds of redundancies. We stood down Macca, our mining contractor, for four months, and we battened down the hatches. In financial year 2020, we only ran the operation for 30% of the year, and we finished that year with a $100 million loss. It almost broke us. But as we moved out of that period, we were successful in acquiring Altura, the neighbouring property. We had to really stretch the credit card to secure that, but we got the deal done. And shortly thereafter, winter was becoming spring, lithium pricing was improving, and from that point forward, it was foot down, making the most of this incredible market that Pilbara finds itself. So although Pilbara was early to the party in lithium, it's been a massive opportunity now, of which the team is hell-bent on making the most of it. So that brings us to 2023. We have had the biggest year ever. At the start of the year, we agreed an accelerated growth mandate uh, with the board. 
Quarter two, we completed a number of re refinance initiatives, so some government-backed debt facilities, long tenure, low cost. Quarter three, quarter four was really around getting on with the job of delivery, both the expansions plus the operation. We uh, commenced construction of the P680 project. We approved the P1000, FID was completed. And we finished quarter four with uh, a record set of numbers for sales and production. Also during the year, we, we had some change with the executive team. We had some renewal in that Brian Lynn, uh, our long-serving CFO, chose to, to, to retire and, and take, take uh, the off-ramp. And he handed uh, the baton to Luke Patoli, who's come in on CFO. Also joining the executive, executive team was a few others who have bolstered out the ranks. So Vince DiCarlos, Sandra McInnes, uh, John Stanning, and Paul Laybourne to complete the set. And yeah, I'm delighted with the executive team we've built out. We, we think we've got a, a fantastic leadership group with deep expertise, a passion for the business, and most, most importantly, a want to roll up the sleeves and support their team. So all of this occurred during the year past. And just in the past week, we've had a few other milestones. We completed our FID for our midstream demo plant. And just today, we announced a resource upgrade uh, to the tune of 109 million tonnes, bringing us up to 414 million tonnes. So a 36% upgrade to our resource, so great announcement to share this morning. Now the outlook for lithium is looking pretty spectacular, and this is what motivates us to keep the foot down and get on with the job of making the most of this incredible asset we've got. What you see here is benchmark minerals forecast for, for lithium. Uh, demand is the yellow line, supply is the stacked column. And I draw your attention to the clear air that you can see at 2040 on the right-hand side of the graph. That gap is the equivalent of 12 Pilgangoras once we're fully expanded, 12. And if you pick up the grey bit of the bar at 2040, that, that number extends to 20. So what this says is the world needs a lot of lithium above and beyond all of the identified assets so far. It's all required to market in order to satiate the expected demand in this space. So for Pilbara, we've got the foot down and we're going to make the most of this incredible environment and capitalise on the lead that we think we've established. So how are we doing that? Well, our strategy is focused around one aim, our aim is to be a leader in the, in the provision of sustainable battery materials products. We've got four planks to our strategy. First and foremost, it's about the operating platform. We want that shooting the lights out, shift after shift, quarter after quarter, year after year. Secondly, we want to expand that operating platform. We want to make the most of this incredible tier one asset that we've got. That starts with the drilling, and of course, case in point today with the resource expansion speaks to that. And we want to match with that the right production capacity such that we can bring more lithium units to market more quickly and make the most of this incredible asset. Priority three, chemicals. This is all about extracting more margin per lithium unit coming from the resource. And lastly, a distant fourth is diversification, which is about considering where to next beyond the Pilgrim Gore asset. So our priorities in that order are all focused around the most rapid value creation pathway for our shareholders and our stakeholders. And I'll step through these one by one. Starting with the operation. So we've got five years of operating experience under the belt. Year on year it's been an increment except for FY20 that you can see here where we had our, our lithium winter. Uh, the year just passed, it's been a 64% leap on the prior year. It's a big step up in production, but I'd just like to say it wasn't easy during the year we've had, there's been a lot of growing pains internally, a lot of challenges, and just to touch on a few, in mining we've been ramping up, and, it's, and our supporting infrastructure has struggled to keep pace, but the site team has successfully managed that, and the plant, uh, as it relates to maintenance and processing, we've seen all sorts of challenges and improvement, all the while integrating the expansion project through a lot of tie-ins, so a lot, a lot of challenges work through there. We've been expanding rooms to support both the operation and the expansion. And then corporately, um, we've had plenty of grow growing pains there also. We've had an 80% increase in staff count. Uh, we paid our first dividend that I mentioned a moment ago. We even paid our first tax. It was a bit of a milestone. 
Um, you name it, it's been all on for young and old internally. So with that, I'd just like to acknowledge the great team at Pilbara Minerals. Well done. These are your results. You can be, feel very proud of what's been delivered. And I think we're in fantastic stead with the quality uh, of this team taking the project forward. And another quick acknowledgement, a thank you to, to Simon Coyle, our outgoing GM, who's rode much of this journey. And thank you to Brett McFadgen, who's now got his hand firmly around the baton as our new GM. He's running the ball forward quickly with the new leadership team, and he's made a fantastic start and has been a big contrib contributor to much of the results that you see here. Now, strong volumes times strong pricing equals a healthy balance sheet. This is uh, certainly one for the fridge door. We've had very, very healthy operating cash flows quarter on quarter. And I'll ask you to think that over the next 18 months to 24 months, we're actually going to be doubling our produced tonnes. So if you take the view that pricing continues or even moderates back a bit, we're going to be producing a, a lot more tonnes. Therefore, we should be set to see strong revenues uh, continue, all going well. And we look forward to um, seeing that happen in due course. Now moving now to the, our expansion plans, it's been going really well. So the two bars that you can see here are 680 and P1000, that's our 680,000 tonne uh, step up um, construction project and then P1000 is a million tonnes per annum. Both projects going well, the P680 is on track for commissioning this quarter, ramp up next quarter and P1000 started well as well. Now to your right, you'll see the, the dotted lines. We like the idea of growing even further, but we've got studies to do to inform what step up that, would, that, that could be. But given the resource upgrade today, um, you'd hope that we should be positioned to, to do a level of step up beyond where we are today. Now we did think about putting a rocket where the dot, dot, dot is, but our, our legal team uh, rightly uh, called us on that one. But never mind, maybe next year. Um, a couple of pictures of our expansions. And then having completed those expansions, we'll be sitting at a yeah, million tonnes per annum subject to head grade, which makes us the second largest hard rock operator globally, uh, second only uh, to green bushes, which is pretty fantastic. As it relates to the resource, this is our journey of drilling versus uh, resource and reserve conversion. And you can see a really healthy trend of drill metres uh, to, to resource and re reserve creation. And that last step up in the, in the top right corner with 109 million tonnes takes us to 414. All reserve is yet to come and we look forward to releasing that in the coming weeks. But just a quick shout out to John Holmes. Uh, he's our exploration manager. He's one of the, those founding geos. He's gone the full journey with Pilbara. Uh, seven years plus, um, he is the chief architect behind this full journey and yeah, uh, credit to you John, um, great that you're, he's still going strong and we're looking for more tonnes out of John and his team in, in the quarters and years to come and, and I would just also add that as it relates to Pilbara's culture, John is an absolute standout and he's the embodiment of the grit, the, t t t t the determination and the teamwork. So. Thanks, John. And by the way, he calls himself employee number one, so if you want to get a rise out of him, call him employee number 10. <laughs> uh, another snapshot on the resource. Uh, you can see we've moved from the light green to the dark green out to the right over the past year. So, And this, what you see here is the, effectively the lithium universe for, for hard rock producers. So we're well and truly one of the bigger players um, of the set. Moving now to chemicals, and a quick reminder, that our upstream is our core business today. We produce a spodumene concentrate of circa 5 to 6%. Downstream is uh, battery grade chemicals, hydroxide or carbonate. Midstream, which is in the middle, is about producing an, an intermediate product, which is a value-added chemical product. And I'll offer some detail uh, on that in a second. Now, midstream demonstration plant that we announced FID only last week, is all about demonstrating a potential intermediate product for the future. We have focused in on, on lithium phosphate, and the idea here is to bring some of the chemical processing to the mine site and achieve three things. One, more value adding at the mine site to, pro to produce a more valuable product. Uh, two, 
uh, step down in carbon energy intensity care of the electric calcination uh, um, equipment uh, care of our joint venture partner Calix. Third benefit uh, we're going for is to drop out the alumina silicate waste that would otherwise be present with the spodumene concentrate. Drop that out, out at the mine site where it can be readily handled. And what heads out the gate, a high grade uh, lithium chemical salt, which we think will be potentially the product of the future. Now we're also considering lithium sulfate and other types of intermediate products which we might gravitate to in time, but for now we're pretty keen on lithium phosphate. We'll see how we go. Now it's very much R&D. Um, the demonstration plant, as the name suggests, is to learn and bed down learnings and see how it completes, competes excuse me, uh, globally, um, but it shows a lot of promise. But it also acknowledged that there's others looking at other midstream alternates and others looking at different types of processing technology. And for those, I applaud you and, and we encourage you. Lithium industry has to find more sus sustainable methods. Pilbara is having a, a red, hot, red hot crack at this process. We think it shows promise, but, it, but there's other solutions out there. And we heard Dr. Yu on the Pride conversation uh, speaking exactly about this challenge uh, for lithium. So we'll see how we go. Moving to our downstream participation, our joint venture with POSCO is going well. Uh, for those who are not familiar, uh, we are participants in a 43,000 tonne lithium hydroxide plant in South Korea, an existing battery materials hub. It's deep into construction, progress is, is going well and we have a pathway to step up to a 30% equity stake uh, in time. So delighted with progress and our partnership with POSCO. And moving to uh, diversification, that POSCO partnership was the product of a, of a partnering process back in 2018. At the time, there were only four or so candidates that we're engaged with. We're, the partnering process here is effectively deja vu. Uh, the long list of parties we're, we've been engaged with here has been something like 70, of which we've been talking with a much smaller subset. But the offer to market here is up to 300,000 tonnes for the purposes of a downstream uh, business together. We'll see how we go. I think this is one of the most compelling uh, lithium transactions in the market today, given that this is tonnes coming from an existing operation, being Pilbara, and they'll be available by, by mid-25 as a function of the P1000. So an exciting offer to market. Look forward to updating uh, later in the year. Moving to sustainability, as it relates to our decarb pathway, uh, we have started our first step. The uh, six megawatt solar farm is now commissioned and operating out on site uh, with community investment. During the year we've had, we committed to four multi-year partnerships, so delighted to be doing that. And, and the first time really Pilbara's been in, in a position to start materially uh, giving back, so we're proud about those first uh, couple of commitments. Then moving to Indigenous engagement. We've continued with our engagement uh, processes uh, there, but there is one uh, project which is dear to my heart and, and a few of the team I'm keen to touch on uh, just now. And that's the Australia uh, Battery Project, the Australia School Battery Project. Now, the Australia School is on Yamal land. It's, it's to the north of where our operation is. And it's the largest, sorry, it's the longest running, uh, longest consistently independently running school uh, uh, doing Aboriginal teaching. I think I've got that right, mouthful. Um, yeah, longest running school, effectively. And... Terry Butler is the chair of the uh, group who, who runs the school. He came to us in 2018 and said, would you guys help us out, install some solar? Um, we'd like to save um, some diesel. It's costing us a fortune. And we said to Terry, let's do one better. Let's add some lithium batteries. We're a, we're a battery, we're a lithium group, of course. Um, but of course, we didn't know at the time we'd be going headfirst into that downturn. Fast forward to today, the, the system stood up, it's running and uh, we're absolutely delighted to be supporting uh, the, that school and, and the efforts out there. And I'd just like to, to really, you know, the reason we've shown this is to highlight really three things. The first is to say these solar uh, battery solutions really do work and they are cost effective. In this case, it's going to be saving a six-figure number uh, in terms of diesel costs for the school, which of course gets channeled back to the kids. Uh, secondly, 
uh, these needs are, are real. This was in our backyard and you're yeah, delighted we can help out, but I'm sure there'll be some other backyards where these needs are required for the other miners. And then lastly, a, sh a shout out to Terry, um, Ingrid, uh, Bruce, and all the teachers out there. These guys are champions who are devoting, in some cases, decades of their life to supporting uh, this teaching. So, um, Terry, thank you for, for asking us and involving us in this project, and thank you for being patient, and most of all, thank you for all the work you've done for the community, you, Ingrid, and all connected. We're proud to have this association and, in a small way, help out with our 50-50 project partner, Pacific Energy. So lastly, to finish, Pilbara is thriving, and that's set to continue. And it's set to continue because of our great people, our performance, and the potential with all the, run, the value adding runway we have ahead. So with that, thank you very much and thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Dale. Don't go anywhere just yet. We've probably got time for one very quick question. That looks like, and no, we'd have come, one come through to the live stream. Dale, could you please speak to the midstream product and the feedback from potential customers? Feedback's been really positive. And, and the neat thing about uh, lithium phosphate as an intermediate product, it has the potential to access a broader customer group. Uh, not only our existing customers, hydroxide and carbonate producers, but potentially uh, the LFP uh, subset, all of which have been very encouraging of us uh, pursuing this initiative, which is pretty neat. Excellent, excellent. Again, ladies and gentlemen, please uh, thanks, Dale. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.